Once a fate scribe entrusted with Corthia's countless secrets, the Moss were in seized Rokalo and bound him to the jailer's will. With Torgas's power at his disposal, Rokalo seeks to author a new fate for the Shadowlands. I'm Ventusius and welcome to my normal and heroic fate scribe Rokalo guide. If you're interested in other languages, don't forget to enable the subtitle feature and pick the one you're after in the YouTube video. Fate Scribe Rukalo, the 8th boss in the Nipple 1 Sanctum of Domination raid, is going to be one that feel overwhelming at first, but will quickly become an encounter in which managing the Rings of Fate is all that you and your team should focus on. Deceivingly simple and complicated at once, it will require a lot of situational awareness and quick reactions to defeat. The fight consists of three phases, with the first two phases repeating twice while the third will have more or less both phases combined. Let's start things off with the first. Here, the Fate Scribe will occasionally mark his current tank with Invoke Destiny, which after 8 seconds, deals massive shadow damage to the whole raid but lessens with distance, so your tank will have to run as far as possible and let it explode there. After the explosion, a Shade of Destiny will spawn on the tank's position and target them with Burden of Destiny, which makes it slowly crawl towards the tank, increasing their incoming damage by 75%, and if it reaches its target or reaches full energy, it will erupt with Overwhelming Burden, applying a nasty shadow damage dot to the whole raid, so don't let that happen. You'll want to save your tank and raid by killing the shit as soon as possible, knowing that it cannot be crowd control, however it can be slowed. Once defeated, the Shade will shatter into lesser Fate Spawn Anomalies, which are simple adds that you can interrupt an AoE stun, as they'll be continuously casting Anomalous Blast, dealing minor damage to random players. You should try to kill the Shade near the boss so that those anomalies can be easily cleaved down. Every time a tank gets afflicted by the Invoke Destiny Explosion debuff, the other tank should take the boss, which will make Rokalo gain 3 stacks of Diviner's Probe. This will allow the boss to do a series of 3 large shadow hits on the new tank, so be prepared when swapping tanks. The next mechanic will be Faded Conjunction, which will create several beams of deadly energy blasts that shoot after a 6 second delay towards the opposite side of the arena. There are two possible patterns. The first one will form an hourglass-like shape when all 3 starting beams are close to each other. The second will be sort of a snowflake when the 3 initial beams are spread farther apart. Those beams deal 25,000 shadow damage and will leave a debuff if you get hit lasting 1 minute. That debuff increases the damage taken by those beams by 50%, meaning that you may survive if you get hit, but you'll likely die if it gets you a second time. With the boss room being as big as it is, warlock gateways are especially useful here to get out of a bad position. From time to time, the fate scribe will place call of eternity on several players, which are going to be large circles that deal damage every 2 seconds for 8 seconds, and upon expiration will do significant shadow damage to all players caught within the 20 yard circle. As usual, make sure to take those out of the raid. Lastly, Twist Fate will be frequently cast by the boss, applying a shadow damage dot to random players. Make sure healers pay special attention to those that might have both a Twist Fate debuff and the Call of Eternity 1. Once the boss reaches 70% health, he will retreat to the center of the arena, making him almost invulnerable to damage and activating the Loom of Fates, which are those giant circles with runes on the ground. This marks the beginning of phase 2, as well as the main course of this encounter, featuring likely many sudden deaths, particularly on Heroic, but we'll get to that later. Realigned Fate will then start, which will make those rings spin quickly in random directions for a few seconds, and once they stop spinning, the 40 second timer to save your own fate will commence. You will then see one glowing rune appear on each ring, as well as one empty socket. Your goal will be to move the circles in a way so that all runes are aligned with their sockets and failing to do so in 40 seconds will result in an immediate wipe through Darkest Destiny. In order for you to move a ring, all you have to do is have a player stand on the activated rune knowing that if one player stands on it, the ring will rotate clockwise while having two players on the rune will make the ring move counterclockwise. Depending on the socket's location from its activated rune, you might want to start counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Whatever you decide, make sure to not alternate directions once you've already started, as you will most likely not make the timer if you do. This means that my general tip for you will be to just start rotating a rune as fast as possible, and even if it has to rotate in a longer direction, it is still better to start right away than to wait for a partner to join after a few seconds. Keep in mind that the entire raid during that time will be afflicted with unstable accretion, which will damage players every 3 seconds, so make sure to have at least one mobile healer keeping an eye on those ring operators, or at the very least have specs that can off-heal themselves while moving alongside the 
Rune. While this was the main part of Phase 2, the rest of the raiders will have to deal with Fate Fragment, which are going to be floating anima orbs spawned by larger anima orbs rotating around the edge of the arena. Those will be flying everywhere in similar fashion to Odin orbs from Legion's Trial of Valor, and if one touches you, it will deal 20,000 shadow damage and slow you by 33% for 7 seconds. A useful tip I can give you is that a Paladin's Blessing of Freedom makes a player immune from taking damage from these orbs, making it possible to easily soak them so that allies don't get hit. Additionally, two Fate spawn monstrosities will spawn on two sides of the arena, so make sure your tanks pick them up before they kill a player. Those adds will be slowly growing in power thanks to Monstrosity's boon, which will increase their damage done by 10% every 8 seconds as well as cast an interruptible cast called Despair, leaving a significant shadow damage dealt on all players within 25 yards as well as a 20% slow for 6 seconds if not interrupted. Make sure to try and finish off those tank adds before the boss comes back. Once all circles are properly aligned, Phase 1 will resume and will last until Rokel reaches 40% when he will start phase 2 once again. After having done phase 2 a second time, phase 3 will commence. Phase 3 will be a combination of phase 1 and phase 2. The phase crab will attack the raid as normal and continue to use all his phase 1 abilities, but in addition to that, he will frequently activate the loom of fate rings. This time, however, you will only have 30 seconds to rotate them into correct positions before the raid is wiped. Your priority at all times is going to be managing the circles while trying to stay alive by dodging death beams, killing the ad that is chasing the tank, as well as not killing rotating players with Call of Eternity explosions. Survivability is key here, so avoid doing risky DPS moves. This covers the encounter on normal. The heroic difficulty, however, will add two new, quite significant mechanics as you can expect those to wipe your raid multiple times, especially in non-organized groups. Firstly, Call of Eternity Circles debuff, upon exploding, will leave an Echo of Eternity which are going to be secondary Call of Eternity explosions. This means that after the first Call of Eternity, you'll have 6 rings explosions instead of 3, knowing that 3 of them will happen at the same place previous players went to explode. This severely limits free space on the arena for you to work with. The best way to go about it is to try and stack them on one side so that if a deadly beam overlap occurs, you can always run to the other side. What you can also do is freely go far away with them by utilizing your class mobility, so that players that get debuffed but don't have access to good mobility can still safely place them out of the raid without having to go 40 yards away. This method can definitely work, however it will require a bit more personal responsibility from raiders. The second major heroic change is Runic Affinity, which is likely going to be the most pug unfriendly mechanic of the entire raid. When phase 2 starts, every time the Fate Scribe activates the Loom of Fates, a few players will be chosen and receive a debuff called Runic Affinity. This will allow them, and only them, to manipulate and rotate the rings, so you now have to get your entire roster of players ready to do the rings properly. What I recommend doing to make things easier, as long as everybody cooperates, is to first place different markers on all rings. Then, being the modern WoW gamer you are, take a simple weak aura that I'll link in the video description that will assign debuffed players with those raid markers, so that they can immediately go to their assigned ring and start rotating it. As mentioned before, rotating them counterclockwise is not necessary most of the time, but if you'll need to, that is when the backup players, which are those without an assigned raid marker, will need to come and help. An important note here will be that one tank will also get debuffed with Runic Affinity. Make sure the other one tanks both adds if that becomes necessary. If you want to check out additional tips and raid notes, you can find out more in my Discord as I'll have a pinned section for boss talks. This was my Fate's Cry Brookello boss guide. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit the like button, and if you decide to subscribe, apart from making me smile, I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Goodbye.